we recognize and realize that we're in a real fight against a real enemy that does not want God's people to succeed, does not want you to see yourself as that amazing individual God sent you here to be. I, I, I'm grateful today. That's why I played that, because I am grateful for where God has brought me from. I'm thankful. I'm appreciative. I mean, I just can't thank God enough for what he's doing in my life. I should say what he has done, what he is doing, and what I know he will continue to do if I do my part. All of us are here to do their part. And I don't know about you, but I have a made up mind. I'm I'm determined. I'm determined to become that man. And I'm, I'm I realize and recognize I'm still a work undone. I, you know, Paul said it in 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 in, in, in scripture. He says he has not yet apprehended on how to live this life. And he said those words when he was up in age, when he had already started a lot of churches, was shipwrecked, went through a whole lot of changes. And you would say that the brother was about ready to retire, but you don't retire from this. I'm here to remind you, you do not retire from this. I, you know, we can have plans on how we want to live out, live out our lives, so on, so forth. But understand, you can never really retire from this. Because the day you make a decision to retire from this is the day the devil going to walk in, walk on, walk all over you because you have to stay committed to God. The Bible says he's a rewarder to those of us who diligently seek him. So, you know, and that doesn't mean that, you know, you get to an age or get to a place in your life where you think, well, I can turn the page. I done did all of what I have to do. So let me close the door on this and let me try that. Uh-uh, I'm going to stick with Jesus. You have to stay with Jesus. And that's what this is about, saints. Today, I, I want to get into your head. I, not so much myself want to get into your head. I really do believe the Lord wants to get into your head, get into your mind. I want you to know, and my theme for today is this, your thoughts matter. Your thoughts matter. You have to think about what you're thinking about. And many of us, we overlook our thoughts. We don't really think about our thoughts because our thoughts are really leading to our actions, leading to how we're going to feel at any given time, so on and so forth. Your thoughts matter. Your thoughts matter. Uh, uh, matter of fact, matter of fact, the devil is defeating many of God's people. Where? In their minds. In their minds. Why? Because they're not paying attention to their thoughts. You know, we're lashing out at people. We're angry. We're upset. We're sad, broke, busted, disgusted. We're going through all of this negative drama stuff. Why? Mainly because we're not paying attention to our thoughts. Because if you, you know, would think about what you're thinking about, you would be able to see, know, and understand, you know, why your life is going in a certain direction that you might not want it to go. Why you are feeling in a way that you really don't want to feel. And I'm not here to say every day going to be a great day. But hey, <laughs> as a Christian, you want to at least be able to say that your good days, <laughs> your good days outweigh your bad days. Lord, I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for his blessed anointing. I thank God for the ability to be able to, to rise and shine one more day and give him some glory. I'm here to give God the glory. I'm here to magnify his name because I recognize and realize that if it had not been for the Lord, look back over your life and where he brought you from. You might not be where you want to be, but thank God he didn't leave you in that dumpster. Thank God he didn't leave you on the side of the road. Thank God. Ooh, Lord G, are you hearing me this morning? You didn't wake up in the hospital. You need to be saying, Lord, I thank you. You didn't wake up on a park bench. Thank you, Jesus. You might have to take a, 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 a bus, a train to work. You don't have no gas in the car or whatever it is and that, but you're still here. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Proverbs 4 and 23, my opening text of scripture. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. To keep your heart with all diligent means, you have the responsibility. You have the responsibility of making sure your heart is clean and purged of all sin. Are you hearing me? Purged, pure. In other words, you know, whew, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but David said, create me a clean heart, oh God. Ooh, see, see, and we have the responsibility. You have the responsibility of making sure you're not going to let the world override all that good word you've read, you've studied, you've memorized, and so on and so forth. You know, because we have to be able to put the word of God to work when things are not going the way we might want it to. You have to pay attention to what you are allowing to enter into your mind. Why do I say that? Because what you are allowed to enter into your mind will make its way down into your heart. And the Bible says, out of the heart comes the issues of life. You're now living what's in your heart. Ooh, Lord Jesus. See, and understand this now. What you don't examine, what you don't weigh or evaluate properly, it will definitely be expressed and seen in your actions and activities in either a positive way or a negative way. Man. Oh, maybe I should put it this way so you can understand me for sure. In a worldly way or in a godly way? Because we, we men and women are God. Are you hearing me? See, and, and I might be in the world, but I don't. that doesn't mean I have to live like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, believe like the world, function like the world. Uh-uh. I'm a man, woman of God, and I'm focused and committed on bringing about that which would be pleasing to God. That's it. You have to allow God to search your heart. Lord God, search my heart, oh God. See, and, 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 and let him show you if there is anything in your heart that shouldn't be there. Ooh, Lord Jesus. You know, now, you know, I, I'm not just talking about the bad words we might say, the, the unforgiveness we might carry, you know, the doubt a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. So we have to know that we know that we know if God be for us, Lord Jesus, no weapon. And you don't want to become a weapon against yourself. Why? Because the enemy is real. The devil is real. And his job is to keep you from getting where God wants you to be or where God wants you to, you know, get. See, I, I don't know about you, but I I, I, I just have a, a, a mind when I look back over my life. I recognize and realize I've been in a struggle most of my life, mainly because of the fact the devil didn't want me to get to this place where I am today. And, and, he, sure, and he certainly doesn't want me to stay here. Uh, hey, look here. If you have any peace, joy, love, if you happy, if you are blessed in a marriage, so on and so forth, hey, look here, let me tell you, the devil is not happy about that. And you trying to figure out why you're going through so much stuff, why? Because he trying to he trying to break a good man, good woman down. He trying to break down a good marriage. He does not want you to succeed. He does not want you to think that God is for you. But I can truly say that he who has begun a good work in you, he's done a good work. He's begun a good work in you, my sister. I know everything is not going the way you want it to go. My brother, I know there's times you just want to give up, but you can't. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than that devil that is after you. And you have to be able to rise to the occasion. You have to be able to fight a good fight of faith. That's it. You have to be able to fight a good fight of faith. You see, because, hey, sin will sit you down. Sin will cause you to miss those opportunities and let's just say those things that God has put in place to bless you. And not just bless you, but bless you to be a blessing to others. I thank God for those who are going into the prisons. I thank God working for those who are working in our hospitals. 
I thank God for those who have a street ministry. I thank God for those who are working in our soup kitchens. I thank God for the pastors that stand behind the pulpits. I thank God for the, for the missionaries and the evangelists. I thank God for those who are singing, oh my God, to lift the spirit of God's people through song. Are you hearing me? See, I mean, there's so many ways God can use you, but you have to be able to see yourself as that one that can make a positive difference in the body of Christ, in the kingdom. And, and that's it. You see, because if you don't see yourself as making a positive difference, and then evidently the enemy has tricked you or, or, or have caused you to doubt yourself and to believe that you're of no good to God. And I'm here to tell you, the devil is alive. The devil is alive. See, but through prayer, see, you have to have a prayer life. How can you say you love the Lord, but you don't talk to him? You have to have a prayer life and you have to be able to, to, to not just uh, read the word. You have to study this word of God. You almost have to be like a Berean, you know. They, they study that word for themselves. You have to study that word for yourself. I mean, even, uh, even after you've heard a word, even after you hear this word, you have to study this word for yourself. And Lord, now speak to me, speak to my heart. Why? Because out of the heart comes the issues of life. See, and, and, and when the Bible's telling you that through prayer and meditation of the scriptures and so on and so forth, you're called to do what? To keep your heart with all diligence. To keep your heart with all diligence. But if you allow sin mm, to override all that good word that is in you, you're going to fall and you're going to find yourself at a place like our brother David, Lord Jesus. And I, I'm not going to read all of Psalm 51, but I'm going to read Psalm 51 starting at the ninth verse. And here's what David said in prayer. David prayed to God. He was a man that loved the Lord. And, you know, in his young life, he used to watch the sheep and so on and so forth, look up into the heavens, and he would see the stars and all his wonderful things. But he would he had was able to build a, a bona fide show relationship with God in prayer. Are you hearing me? And, and the real deal is his prayer life carried him a mighty long way. But guess what? As a man, he made a mistake. He fell. He fell to his flesh. And it's so very important that we're paying attention to what we're, you know, what we're doing, what we're seeing, what we're perceiving, what we're allowing our, our eyes to take in, what we're allowing our thoughts to think. Because David, he fell. Why? To his flesh. Why? Because he saw a sister that looked real good up on the rooftop taking a bath. That's how they did it back then. You know? And because he was king, he felt he can, you know, hey, hey, I want that. And that was something he shouldn't have wanted because it was another man's wife. And he was in sin for whew, a long time. But he came to himself and thank God for the Ananias because Ananias came and said some things to him that opened up his eyes and gave him an understanding that, man, I will, I'm in sin. I, I am so far from God. And that's what sin will do. It will take you so far from God. That's why your thoughts matter. Your thoughts matter. Look what, look what, look what David said in Psalm 51 and 9. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities, his transgressions. See, and then he says in the 10th verse, create me a clean heart, oh God. See, we can't fix ourselves. I'm, and let me say it again. You can't fix yourself, my sister. You can't fix yourself, my brother. You need God to do for you what you can't do for yourself. And then what he says, after you create me a clean heart, oh God, renew a right spirit within me. I don't want to chase the sister. I don't want to chase the drugs. I don't want to take that drink no more. I want to put them cigarettes down. I don't want to use foul language. I don't want to talk about my brother and my sister. I don't want to put my pastor down. I don't want to. I mean, there's some things that all of us are carrying that we shouldn't want to do. Why? Because if the wrong spirit get up in you, and that's why the man of God says, renew a right spirit within me. 
Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Lord Jesus, Whew. are you hearing me today? Do you understand what your life would be like if you didn't have the Holy Spirit? I don't even want to think about it. I don't even want to think about it. Whew, that Holy Spirit was a down payment. I mean, it was a deposit. I mean, opening a door for me to, 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 to up my game and to get myself together. Thank you. I'm not the man. You're not the man or the woman that you used to be. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit who will lead you into all truth. That Holy Spirit that will, oh, Lord Jesus, that will shake, mold, and mm, bring correction. And, and look what he says. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. See, David wasn't self-righteous. Mm -mm. He realized he was out of he was out of relationship with God. He realized that he had fallen away. He realized that he needed to get back into that place where he had, uh, uh, let's just say, uh, uh, an active. In, 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 in favorable relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Help me, Jesus. Help me do what I need to do, Lord God, because I can't open that door. Ooh, mm -mm. Jesus is the way that leads to life. And I recognize and realize I've closed the door on myself because of sin. And look what David said. Look what David said. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Man, I mean, God is so good. God is so loving. See, see, look here. You have to be able to see yourself as a movie producer. Why do I say that? Because you have produced a good portion of the life you are now living. You have produced it. Now, I know you want to blame some stuff on the devil, but based upon your choices and decisions, you have produced. Matter of fact, in Psalms, it's Psalms 90, I believe it is, around the eighth verse, somewhere around there, it says, we live our life like a tale that is told. In other words, you're writing a story about yourself every day. Lord Jesus, are you hearing me? And the thing about it is, you know, when you know the right thing to do and you don't do it, the Bible says it's sin. You are a producer, whether you know it or not. You have produced this life you're now living. Now, now, undoubtedly, some things have taken place in your life that you didn't ask for. Some things you wasn't looking for or expecting to, 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 to show up at your door, show up in your, in your body, in sickness, whatever. The things is, there's some things that happened and, and, and you didn't see it coming. Lord, I wish I knew, but you didn't know. It just showed up unexpectedly, uninvited. But understand this. Your response to the unseen events and the things that have taken place in your life must be guided by the word of God. Are you hearing me? Your response, as much as you might think that is what has happened to you, is your response to the things that have happened to you is what God is looking at. Because <laughs> we can talk a good talk now I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. But then, you know, when things don't go the way you want it to go, you're ready to abandon ship. You're ready to jump ship. See, and 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 see, and mainly, mainly because who you are, understand this now, who you are or what you are living today is being directed and guided, what? By your thoughts. You are who you are and what you are living today is being directed, you're the director, and you're being guided by your thoughts. So you have to be able to guard your heart above all things. Are you hearing me? Above all else, whatever, however way you want to put it, you have to be able to guard your heart. Why? Because out of the heart comes the issues of life. I mean, God is speaking to us today now. He is speaking to you today and he wants you to get it right <coughs> excuse me now how do you guard your heart well you have to keep your mouth free of any corrupt uh, conversations and communications and you know all that negative talk that we can talk you got to free yourself of that got to stop talking like that stop 
stop thinking. And, and really, it's coming out of the way you're thinking because our thoughts will proceed, you know, our, 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 our talk and, 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 and actions. So, so also you have to keep looking directly ahead, straight ahead. Keep your eyes focused and fixed on that which is ahead, on your future, your hopes, your dreams, the vision that God has, you know, given you. Those things that you should be aspiring for, aspiring for. See, and don't overlook the fact that the thoughts you are mainly focusing on daily is producing the life in the character of the person you believe yourself to be. Now, you might not say that about yourself, but understand now, your thoughts are shaping and molding and producing the character in the life of the person that you see and believe yourself to be. Mm, mm -mm. That's why, you know, you, I remember as a kid, I would play cowboys and Indians and you know, Batman, Robin, and all this. I play all these little games here and all this little stuff I've seen on television. And these are roles that we play. Well, don't, don't be a hypocrite. I'm going to say that again. Don't be a hypocrite. You got to be the real deal, holy field, when you come to God. 99 and a half won't do. You got to come genuine. You got to come for real. And God's looking for holiness. God's looking for righteousness. Are you hearing me? Only the holy. Only the holiness and only those of us that would be in God, in Christ, shall see God. Are you hearing me? Why? Because God, God says, Jesus is the door that leads to life. Jesus is the way. He's the truth and he's the life. And each and every one of us have to be able to come to God and come to him in spirit and come to him in truth. Man, see, your thoughts have turned you into the person you are today. Your thoughts have turned you into the person you are today. Now, hey, and that's why I say we don't give ourselves enough thoughts. See, your thoughts matter, and you don't think enough about what's going on, what you're going through. And some of us are living off the top of our heads and not living from our hearts. Well, I should say from our minds or thoughts or from our hearts. See, you have to, you know, you have to, your heart has to be fixed. Your heart have to be fixed. You have to be focused. You have to be determined. I, I'm not going back there. I'm not going back to the hurt, the pain, the shame. I'm coming out of this re revolving door, this cycle of dysfunction. I'm not going back there no more. I'm not going to uh, move down this highway called life looking through the rearview mirror. I got to keep my eyes focused and committed on where God is telling me to go or what my assignment might be, whatever the case might be, you have to keep moving forward. That's what it's about. Keep moving forward. Why? Because believe it or not, all things are working together for the good for those of us who love God. Hey, Proverbs 23 says, 23 and 7 says, for as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. So are they. This brother, James Allen, wrote this book book as a man thinketh. And there was something he said in that particular book that really caught my attention. I want to share it with you. If you haven't heard it before, you're going to hear it now. Here's what he says. As a being of power, as a being of power, intelligence, and love, in the Lord of his own thoughts, man holds the key to every situation and contains within himself that transforming and regenerative agency by which he may make himself what he wills. And what he's saying is that regenerative power by which he can make himself what he wills to be. You know, and, and, and you do that by working with the Holy Spirit. You do that by growing and absorbing and depositing this word in your heart Hey, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing. That word renewing means daily. I need to keep doing what I'm doing right now. Are, are you hearing me? I got to crack the book. I got to get on my knees. I got to, you know, I, and don't forsake the fellowship, the assembly. We have, hey, God has placed us in the, he placed us in his family, the family of God. 
in Proverbs 4 and 26 says, ponder the path of your feet. In other words, think, hey, you got the, you know, you got people just going places, just drifting, drifting down this highway called life. Like they're on a, on a boat without a sail, without a raft, without oars. They just drifting in the water, going, don't know where they're going. Don't have no dock, no port, no, no, no place that they want to arrive. They're just out here. You know, and this is why we have to stay off the drugs and the alcohol and all that other crazy stuff. It's not about trying to run away from a problem. It's about facing the problem and dealing with it, recognizing and realizing that your thoughts matter. Picking up a drug or a stimulant or something like that, that's not going to help you to remedy the problem that you might be dealing with. You don't bury your head in the sand. When you bury your head in the sand, that means your backside is sticking up and somebody going to kick you in it. And most likely it's going to be the devil. So the real deal is you got to stand erect. You got to know that you're a soldier in the army of the Lord and I'm going to stand for what is right. I'm going to stand for what is good and I'm going to stand with my God. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because an unclean mind will give you an unclean heart. And if you got an unclean heart, that means your life going to be unclean. Are you hearing me? See, but when you have a clean heart, you have a clean life, and God knows a, a, a healthy soul and spirit. Are you hearing me? And, you know, our bodies might be a little beat up, but your soul and your spirit, what did the Bible say? What do a prophet, a man, a woman, to gain the whole world, but lose your soul? And I want a healthy soul and spirit. I want my spirit. I, oh, man. See, understand this. See, your character is being shaped by your thought life. Your thought life matter. Your thought life matter. Your thoughts matter. And you have to be able to think about what you're thinking about. Pay attention to your thoughts. Because wrapped up in your thoughts is good character. See, understand this now. Good character is not a thing of chance. It's not going it's, it's to happen uh, by chance. Good character is a byproduct of right thinking. Not just right thinking, but also right believing. So if, if you want to be able to develop yourself, you have to ha make sure you are operating in the right information. Uh, misinformation is going to take me away from, let's just say, from my purpose. It's going to take me away from God's plan and purpose for my life. You have to be able to get that right information, and I can tell you where to look in the B-I-B-L-E, believer's instructions before leaving earth. Oh, man, that's a powerful statement right there. Believer's instructions before leaving earth. And so many of us, we're living our life like we're going to be here forever. Let me remind you, you're going to die one day. This is not your home. But you go to that word of God, which is believers' instructions before leaving earth, an acronym for the Bible, D-I-B-L-E, guess what? You have a good chance of living a good life, a wholesome life, and I'm not going to say a life without problems and cares and worries now. You're going to deal with some stuff, but I want to be able to say my good days. My good days. Oh, I'm getting excited. My good days outweigh my bad days. And that's what God want to do in your life. He want to show you that your good days cannot weigh your bad days. Hey, every day is not sunshiny. Every day, hey, hey, look here. Every day you're dealing with something different. The weather, the state, you know, you're going to get rain one day. You're going to get, you're going to get uh, uh, showers. You're going to get, you're going to get sunshiny days. You're going to get cloudy days. Hey, hey, that's, that's what you call life. This is life. And life is going to truly be what you make it, or should I say what you think it, how you perceive it. Your thoughts matter. Your thoughts matter. See, and, and, and good character is developed by the continue, by your continued efforts in, 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 in putting a forth right thinking. I got to keep thinking right. See, the enemy want to interrupt your journey by depositing some negative stinking thinking and all that. That, that that negative drama stuff. He want he don't want you to see yourself as an overcomer. He doesn't want you to see yourself as someone who can say, I'm more than a conqueror. He doesn't want you to see yourself as a winner. But I'm here to tell you, my sister. I'm here to tell you, my brother. 
you have to continually, hey, as I said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because what is in your mind is going to work its way down into your heart. And out of the heart come the issues of life. Matter of fact, Jesus says, keep your mind stayed on him and he will keep you in perfect peace. There are times in my life, I, I don't Hey, just give me some peace. I, I, give me some peace. Give me some peace from some of those bad choices and decisions that I've made in the past. Give me some peace from that sister, from that brother, from that somebody that don't know you the way I know you. Give me some peace, Lord Jesus, in this world that is that is that is filled with, with so much tragedy and so much pain, so much suffering. You look at what is going on in Ukraine. You look at what is going on in 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 in, in, in Israel and in, in Gaza, Palestine, and Pac all over the world. Look at what is going on in our government. Look at what's going on in our cities, in our states. Look at what is going on in your family. Sometimes you don't have to go that far. Sometimes you don't have to look that far. You don't have to go to the television. You don't have to go to your computer. Sometimes you can just look around right in your own family. What happened? How did this take place? What went wrong? What didn't I do that I should have done? What could I have done that I didn't do? So on, and, hey, life is full with questions, but there are answers to those questions and you can find those answers in the word of God. You can find those answers in your, on your knees when you have a little talk with your Jesus. See, a person's thought life will either make them or break them. Did you hear what I said? Your thought life will either make you or break you. Look at look at Isaiah 26 and 3. And I'm going to read this to you from the New Living <clears throat> translation. You, meaning God, will keep you, will, will keep you in perfect peace, all who trust in him and trust in the Lord. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always. For the Lord God is the eternal rock. He is the eternal rock, the everlasting rock, a rock that won't fade, a rock that won't get broken. Are you hearing me? Stand on, on the rock. And we know that rock to be Christ. Hey, this, uh, I want to stand on a sure and firm foundation. That's it. Why? Because your life, your, your thoughts will either make you or break you. See, and a person will be made or unmade by their own thoughts. That's why I say your thoughts matter. And you have to think about what you're thinking about. Why? Because your thoughts are either forging weapons that will destroy you. In other words, you destroying yourself. Or your thoughts will shape and produce the kind of life you want to live. And I don't know about you, but I want to be happy. And I realize every now and then stuff going to come into play that's going to try to make me unhappy. That's designed to steal my joy, steal my peace. But when you know this man named Jesus, and when you can come to a place in your life where you understand that all things can work together for the good, because even the bad that is being played out in your life, God can turn it into a greater good. It can become a testimony. See, because it's not just about you. It's how God can use you to be a blessing and how God can use you to encourage another. Man, see, because look here, your mind is like a garden. And in and, and, and this garden, your mind has to be cultivated and cared for. How do you do that? Through prayer. How else do you do it? Through the study and the reading of the word of God. See, see, and a mind that is cultivated and cared for will bring forth those things that are good and pleasing, those things that will make a brother, make a sister happy, uh, those things that will make you want to get up in the morning excited, happy, and blessed. And man, I, 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 I want to see what God's going to do for me today. And I'm going to see how God's going to be able to use me today. And man, it has not yet appeared what you shall be. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because God is still working on you. And I like to say all of us are unfinished goods. All of us are unfinished vessels. All of us. 
And I can also say we're all leaky vessels because this word of God will patch you up. But as you get back out here in the world and keep doing and keep living, keep walking, talking, and just interacting with others, hey, you're going to begin to develop these cracks and holes and stuff like that. You got to get back into the word. You got to get back into the fellowship, back into the into the relationship with, with God and, and so on and so forth. Why? Because, hey, you can't fix yourself. Because if you could fix yourself, you would have went to work on yourself a long time ago. You see, so, so, so a mind that is neglected will do what? Will bring forth weeds. Those weeds, man. Those lies. Those things that, are, that will make you uncomfortable. Those, you know, and some weeds can look nice, but they're still weeds. See, and, and that's the thing about the devil. The Bible says the devil comes like an angel of light. And he come to do what? To, to, to fool the elect. We're talking about the men and women of God. And this is why you have to have a discerning spirit. You have to be able to discern what is right, what is wrong. You have to be able to, ooh, Lord Jesus. Read the writing on the wall. You've got to be able to know for yourself what God would have you to do. Because when you neglect to cultivate your mind with the spiritual things of God, these weeds are going to come forth. And what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself living a life that you don't want to live. And that's not what this is about. Why? Because if I'm saved, I should want to live in such a way I can say, man, I'm I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm happy. Thank you, Jesus. And you know something? Those people who are sharing life with you, that that know you for how you used to be, can say, wow, look at what God done in their life. Well, if God did it for them, he can still do it for me. They might be outside of the fellowship, outside of the relationship. They might still be living worldly, but they can say, look at what the Lord done for them. Man, I remember when they was, and you know, are you hearing me? But but because God did for you what you couldn't do for yourself, well, if that same God can do for you what he did for you, maybe he can do it for me. And that's, and that's how God can use you. And you don't have to say a thing because people are watching what you're saying. People are watching what you're walking, what you're talking. People are watching the new life you've, or the new man you've evolved into, the new woman you've grown into. And that's and that's saying a whole lot more than what you can say out of your mouth. You see, and as a Christian, you have to be able to see that your thoughts and your character are one and the same. Your thoughts and your character are one and the same. You can't separate the two. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, so is she. And what she or he is, is going to demonstrate or prove the character of the man or the woman that you say. You know, you can say you all of that. You know, you can say a lot of things, but I can look at your feet and I can see your feet is not taking you where you, you know, what you say you're about. You can say you're a Christian, but if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be going to the club on a Friday night, Saturday night getting up late on Sunday morning, trying to make it to work and trying to make it to church, I should say. And then, you know, want to want to live both sides of the fence. You can't do that. You can't straddle the fence. You got the A, hey, A, hey, you got to make A. Hey, God says he's enmity against the world. You know, in, in other words, he's the enemy of the world. The world is never going to get along with, with, let's just say, with, with, with those of us who are in Christ. Hey, you got some, you had some friends, I should say. When you was in the world, you, you had some friends that you got along with real good. Why? Because you were doing what they were doing. But when you stopped doing what they were doing, they didn't like you anymore. They didn't want to be around you no more. And you had to make a decision. Am I going to go back into fellowship and friendship with them? Or am I going to embrace this new life that God has blessed me with? You have an open door to salvation. Your thoughts matter. And you have to make a decision to choose God. Are you hearing me? To choose Jesus Christ. Choose you this day who you will serve. You know, 
we like to say, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. Well, if the truth be told, you are what you think. You are what you think. Why? Because your thoughts matter. Your thoughts matter. Praise God. Let's pray. Dear God, dear Father, we just want to say thank you for this day. Again, Father God, I, I thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this place in our lives where we recognize and realize that our thoughts matter and our thoughts will make a difference in how we end up living our lives Ooh, in service to you. Father God, we ask for the forgiveness of sin. We pray, Father, that you will grant us and bless us with a fresh start in a new beginning, not based upon what we have done, but based upon our acceptance of your son, Jesus Christ. And Father God, we recognize and realize that this life is special. We're thanking you for this gift called life. I thank you for my pastor. I thank you for my church. I thank you for the fellowship Lord God, you've allowed me to be a part of. I thank you, Father God, for this prayer line. I thank you, Lord, for this channel. And I pray, Father, oh God, more than that, Lord God, that your word will be richly deposited in our hearts. Help us, Lord, to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us, Lord God, to glean from your word direction. Help us, Father God, to know that the best is still yet to come. And we're not talking about the best being in heaven because we know that is the best. But Lord God, while we are still walking down here on the planet, interacting one with another, help us, Lord, to be an encouragement. Help us to be a, a help one to another where we can bring one another to a better place. Oh, God, in the family of God. Lord, we love you, Father God. And truly, we are thankful for all of what you've done. We're thanking you, Father God. Oh, God, for just the richness and just the, 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 the many blessings and benefits that come from the study of your word. God, I pray your Holy Spirit, Lord God, will captivate our hearts, Lord God, and continue to take us down into places, Lord God, where we're unable to go by ourselves. Thanking you, Lord, that you've given us help. Thanking you, Father God, that you've given us, Lord God, your precious Holy Spirit, who will lead us into all truth. So, Father God, those who are on the prayer line, I ask, Father God, that you would release favor, your favor over their lives right now. I pray for a double-fold, triple-fold blessing, Father God, to invade their lives. I cancel out every devil, every demon, every demonic act or activity, Lord God, that want to override what you want for your people to do and to receive today, Lord God. We claim the manifold blessings of Christ over and in their lives today. And Lord, we want to say thank you today as we go into the weekend. And then, Lord, I don't want to forget those who are going to be viewing this by way of YouTube. I thank you for the channel. I thank you, Lord, for those, Lord God, who come to the channel. And I pray even now, Father God, your choice is blessings to be upon them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that, oh, your spirit, Lord God, mm, will continue to elevate. I pray, Father, that your word will continue to shape and mold and fashion the man, the woman you have called them to be. And I pray that you would remove all doubt, all fear, all worry. And I pray that they would be able to lay claim, ooh, ooh God, on, the, on, on, on that which you have already prepared, the gift, the blessing, Father God, the hope of a lively, ooh, my God, prosperous and rewarding future. And Lord, we just want to say thank you today for all of what you've done, all of what you're doing, and all of what you will continue to do in all of our lives. Father God, if there's a man or woman out there, whether on the prayer line or whether viewing this by YouTube, and they don't know you as Savior and Lord, they've been in a struggle, they've been in a fight, and they've heard something today that have caused them to think that this is that day 
they need to make that decision to come to you. I, I ask you to right now, whew, repeat these words after me. From your heart, speak these words. From your heart, I stand before you, a sinner in need of a savior. I believe that Jesus suffered, bled, and died for me. I believe that on the third day, he rose, giving me life, a new life in Christ. And I thank you. I do believe that I'm now forgiven. I believe that I'm saved. And I thank you for this new life I now have in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you repeated those words and you said it from your heart, believe me when I tell you, you are new and improved in a special edition. Now, you might not feel no different, but I can truly tell you, you have moved from darkness into God's marvelous light. You are no longer the man or the woman that you were prior to, to reciting those words, because now you're on that road to salvation. And I can tell you, God is faithful. He's promised to never leave you nor forsake you. And know all things are working together for the good. Dear God, dear Father, bless my brother, bless my sister. I pray that you will continue to hold them by the hand, lead them down that road that will lead to change, that will lead to more, and help them, Father God, to find themselves in you. We pray this prayer for them, and we thanking you for accepting them and bringing them into the family of God. All this we now ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh, praise the Lord, saints. Love you all so much. I thank God for this day. I thank God for Jesus. All praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.